Hi, this is Brian Farrell with Aqueous Solutions LLC, makers of the Geochemist Workbench. Today, I'll show you how to model evaporation. To get started, I'll find the Geochemist Workbench folder in the Start menu, and I'll launch React. The GWB normally uses the B-dot model, an extended form of the debye huckel equation. Since we'll be working at high ionic strengths, I'll open the HMW activity model. I'll go to File, Open, Thermodata, and choose thermohmw.dat. This dataset uses the HMW activity model. Now I'll go ahead and specify the composition of our uh, seawater by adding components to the basis pane. We can see that our initial seawater sample is quite saline and is in equilibrium with carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere. Now we'll move to the reactance pane. First, I'll add a fixed fugacity path to ensure that our fluid remains in equilibrium with carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere. Next, I'll add a simple reactant. I'll choose H2O, uh, change the units to grams, and I'm going to specify a negative mass. So I'm saying here that we will uh, remove 996 grams almost uh, one kilogram, the entire extent of our system uh, over the course of our reaction model. Now I'll just uh, specify a few more items. First I'll go to config, uh, stepping, and I'm going to take the, tell the program to take a little bit smaller steps so we get more detail. I'll click apply, okay? And now I'll go to the output and I'll change this dx plot to zero. Um, we'll get We'll write results to ggplot after every single step of the model. Now I'll go ahead and move to the results pane and click run. I'll go ahead and click plot results to open up ggplot. Now I'll begin editing my plot. Instead of looking at reaction progress, I'll double click this variable and I will choose the mass of H2O to be my x axis variable. I'll change the units to grams and look at a logarithmic scale. And since we want to start with a uh, thousand grams of water, our initial system, I'll click this reverse axis button. And now I'll just turn the auto scale off. And we'll go from a uh, thousand grams to 0.1 grams. On the y axis, I'll change the variable type from components and fluid to minerals. And I'll just look at uh, cubic centimeters. So here we see, um, starting from our initial seawater sample, as we remove fluid from our system, a uh, number of minerals become saturated and precipitate, and then they dissolve and other minerals form. Uh, so this is an equilibrium model of evaporation we can create a, a flow-through uh, model instead as an alternative. Uh, this will remove any precipitated minerals from our system. So I'll go back to React and select Config, uh, Stepping, and I'll choose this flow-through option. I'll just look at the tool set. Uh, do not allow minerals to back react with fluid. So I'll click Apply, OK. I'll rerun the model. In our second model, the flow-through configuration is used to model fractionation. That is, the minerals that form over the course of the reaction path will not redissolve into the fluid. So, thanks for watching our video tutorial on fluid evaporation.